Larry again. Today I'm doing my own variation of Chicago style Italian beef sandwiches on my grill. So if you want to see how it's done, continue watching. What I have here is about two and a half to three pounds of chuck roast. You can, uh, traditionally it's a different kind of cut for a Italian beef. It's a sort of a rump or a top sirloin roast, but uh, I don't have a slicer. So if you're at a home, an at-home cooker like myself, I like to uh, just use chuck roast because it falls apart all by itself. So about three pounds of chuck roast. Um, a blend of mixed herbs, uh, which I will put on the screen here, and I'm going to um, go ahead and mix some olive oil in there to get it into more of a paste. Mix it stick to the uh, to the to the roast easier. So just add oil. There. So now I'm going to rub this all over my meat and uh, get a nice herb crust on it. So now I just rub it on. So you can just use your hands. Get it all in there really good. Rub it in all over. Just like that. Now at this point you can throw the meat right on the grill rack um, which I've done before however I want to retain as much of the moisture and, and fat and herb flavor so I'm going to put it in a Dutch oven and put the Dutch oven on the grill so any uh, fat drippings anything that starts to render will actually be captured in here and uh, make the uh, the sauce or gravy taste better later so now get your trusty grill up the temperature I'm going to cook today a uh, roasting temperature of probably about 325, anywhere between 300 and 350 for starters. So what I have here is my Kamado Joe Big Joe preheating right now. It's about 300 degrees. I'm getting ready to put the food on now. Right before I put the meat on, I got about two cups of chopped onion. I'm just going to throw that on top of there too as well. And let's get it on the grill. Let's go ahead and throw this on there. Right in the middle. I have it set up for indirect cooking. I got my heat deflectors over the, the direct fire. I don't want to uh, fry this thing. I, I want to roast it. So I got my heat deflectors in place for indirect cooking. So I'm going to leave this on here for, for a good, uh, I mean, at least an hour or, or two. Come back and check on it and we'll see uh, what to do next. Forget to add one more item peppers. What I have here is about a cup's worth of uh, chopped Anaheim peppers. It's not, I know it's not the traditional uh, pepperoncinis that are used in Italian beef, but I have a garden full of these. So they're still about the same heat level, same fiber level, like a mild to medium heat. So I'm gonna toss that in right now and let that cook with them. I'm back, it's uh, been about exactly an hour at around 300 degrees. I'm gonna open this thing up and take a look. There we go, looks really good. Uh, it's got some uh, fat drippings and juices bubbling down there. Uh, nice little singeing, uh, dark colored kind of browning on the peppers and onions. I'm gonna add maybe a cup's worth of, uh, of beef stock. And I'm gonna put the lid on. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna let this braise or, or, or uh, steam or braise or slow cook with the lid on, get the, for the rest of the cook, uh, probably a few, uh, at least a few more hours, and it's going to uh, be fall apart tender from that. So we'll come back then. Been about three and a quarter hours uh, since uh, I put the lid on. So about four and a quarter total hours of cook time. Let's see here. The lid. Take the lid off. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks really good. Let's see. 210, 210, 200, 210, and that looks really tender. I mean, my goodness, here, let me adjust the camera so, so uh, you can see this. All right, let's take a look here. There it is. Look at that, it just falls apart, even, even with my probe. That looks delicious. All right, well, I'm gonna pull this thing off in a little bit here, or actually now, and let's bring it in the house. Now I have this Dutch oven on the stove. What I'm going to do 
seen a look at it, uh, it braised really good. It's, it's actually really tender, falling apart. Look at that. But I like a little more liquid. Um, I like my beef sandwiches wet, which means uh, dipped. The bun is soaked in the au jus. So what I did is make another couple cups worth of of uh, beef beef bouillon or beef broth, and I'm just going to pour some in there. I'm going to pour more of it in there. It's about a, another cup there. And hey, what the heck? I got two cups worth, so let's pour it all in, I guess. So it's two cups of additional beef stock. And I'm going to put this back on, put the lid on, uh, probably on low, uh, until we're ready to eat. Okay, uh, time for dinner. So let's take this off. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is ready to eat. All right. Well, let's make a sandwich. Time to make the sandwich. All right, what I got here is my roll. This is this here is a Toronto brand roll. Um, another local one that's really good is Ganella. But it's a nice Italian style roll. And I'm going to open that up. Grab some of this meat. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Here it comes. Drippy. Dripping with plenty of juice. Put that all in there. Just like that. I'm going to add some shredded Fontina cheese. In there. And I like my Sandwich is wet, so what I do is I ladle up some of the uh, some of the juice and pour it all over the bun, or you can just dip the whole bun in the juice. But for the video, this is easier to do, just like that. Nice and wet. Nice Italian beef sandwich. All right, let's give it a try. And there you go, nice Italian beef sandwich, homemade style. So. So let's, let's uh, give this a try here. Mmm. Mmm. Well, definitely a keeper. You gotta give this a try. It's really good. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.